Do you believe that having more money will fulfill your desires and solve most of your personal and business problems? Money is worshiped by people for what they believe that they think it can produce because they have the idea that money makes you free. Whatever you make the primary source of power in your life becomes your God. Small wonder that loving money is the root of all evil. It violates God's first commandment of having no other gods before him. Owning everything, God has no resource needs, but be assured he will accomplish what he wants because he pays for what he orders. God gets our attention in many, many ways. Near the top of the list are money problems. Money not only talks, but it sometimes shouts. God uses money to teach us about himself, helps us to recognize him as our ultimate source and problem solver, and enable us to better management of our skills. I no longer believe in money problems. I do believe we can have problems with money, but since I began to realize how God uses money in our lives, it totally changed my perspectives. When money appears to be the issue, I remember that God literally has all the resources available to him he wants. If he has not released what I think I need, I then have to ask myself some questions. Is God drawing to attention a moral sin in my life? Are greed or materialism my motivation? Are my projects and goals in his will and his timing? Is God trying to protect me from something like success prematurely? Am I in danger of utilizing unbiblical means or partnering with unethical people to accomplish my goals? Am I trying to control things through money rather than put my place and trust in God? Money is time in foldable form. Think about that one. In other words, it is a unit of man's energy expanded over time to secure or produce a service or a product. To spend money is to spend time, our most valuable asset. Money is a unique reminder of our limitations here on earth. When we spend money, we're making choices about how we want to use the work units that produced that money. It represents struggles, pressures, time away from family, days closer to death, and so forth. Spending money is spending time and establishing priorities. Likewise, financial managers, mature Christian stewards, if they are, know that money is not the solution to every problem. They see money as a tool and understand that God's work done God's way will never lack his funding. We say God pays for what he orders. Hence, the steward can respect and use money, but he'll never love it or see it as an end in itself. He will not willingly sell his future and freedom for it, like the incessant borrower who becomes the leader's slave, nor avoid it altogether out of fear, like the wicked, lazy, unprofitable servants in the parables of the talents and the minas. See Matthew 25, 24 to 30 and Luke 19, 20 to 27. Similar to the wise servants of these parables, Christian stewards invest money wisely to produce a profit for almighty and sons and daughters. God wants to empower people with his goals and skills. He wants us to use our wealth to promote this. In the world's economic systems, we see that socialism's supreme goal is to eliminate risk, making everyone dependent upon the state, while capitalism's supreme goal is to make a profit. In contrast, kingdom economics, which is what I'm all about, focuses on empowering people 
to be what God created them to be. When you use money and time and skills to reach into someone's life, we can help them fulfill their destiny. Do you want God's blessing? Let him show you that he pays for what he orders, mostly by creatively leveraging resources in you or those around you through hard work, sacrifice, and a servant heart that is about seeing others grow and mature.